But before the city of Alpharetta and before New Prospect Campground, this land was under different stewardship. For my research on the Cherokee, I visited New Echota Historic Site in Northwest Georgia, which was the Cherokee capital from 1825 through 1838, up until the forced removal to Oklahoma, known as the Trail of Tears, where over 4,000 Cherokee died. Back in the early 1800s, Cherokee life wasn't that different from white farmers. Structures were made from round logs or rough hewn logs, and most Cherokee, including our Alpharetta Sitawaki, had a log cabin with a stacked stone chimney, a stable, and a corn crib on their properties. The Cherokee farmed a large variety of crops, the most popular being corn and many fruit trees, especially peaches, which were introduced by the Europeans. We know our Sitawaki was a farmer and a veteran of the Creek War in 1814. In 1836, Cherokee land and valuation assessments show his land and improvements totaled a whopping $149.50, which included three peach trees. One of the original signers of the Cherokee Constitution was also named Sitawaki, who later became a detachment leader during the Trail of Tears. I'm interested in finding out if they are one and the same, which would make the site even more special, but in any case, it was very important to me to honor the heritage in my design. So originally, it included a green roof pavilion alongside Cherokee lore trails and gardens with historical and cultural markers. In the final design, it was decided the trails would be put on hold, at least for now. But Rockville Park does have some of my Cherokee design elements. Namely, my Cherokee Rose Arbor became the influence for the seven-sided welcome center based on the Cherokee National Heptagon, which was a huge structure situated on a high mound used for ceremonial purposes. Each of the seven sides represented one of the seven Cherokee clans, and the native vine display at the Green Roof Pavilion uses seven different indigenous vines for the same reason. So the really cool thing about the Green Roof is the stormwater that does run off runs off slower and cooler down the copper rain chain, falling into the many rain chain garden here, infiltrating back into the natural systems of our groundwater. These rain chains are decorated with hummingbirds, which were a favorite of the Cherokee, and copper represents the gold, which was the reason the state of Georgia dispossessed the Cherokee of their lands. So you've heard about my design intent, yet five years went by before I was involved in the project again, all thanks to Debbie Gibson, my neighbor and former councilwoman with the city of Alpharetta and the true champion of the park. First, I want to say that I wasn't the only one that was involved in this. I may have been the champion on this uh, park, but uh, there were a lot of people and a lot of organizations that came to assist us in, in the process. About 10 years ago, the city of Alpharetta decided that this piece of property would be wonderful for an environmental center to help our kids understand how to be better stewards of the earth. Uh, over a period of years, many years, um, a different concept started to develop. And instead of having a center that would require ongoing operating costs, the city decided to put in an environmental park. Having a park here, I think, is much more appropriate than having a building that people can come in and out of. We wanted to demonstrate to uh, Alpharetta residents as well as Georgia residents some of the, some of the newer concepts in, in sustainability. Um, one of the concepts had to do with bio, the bioretention system set up in this park. Most of it is, I think 98% of it is in floodplains, so we'll be seeing some flooding here, but we'll also be seeing the way that we can filter the water through the bioretention system that really um, is a showcase, I think, for the southeast. Another one is this beautiful green roof that we're sitting under. We wanted to show people that there were different ways to clean storm water and to uh, continue to teach our children that they needed to take part, uh, an active part in making sure that the earth uh, was sustainable. Whose decision was it to give the go ahead with the park? This project was actually funded uh, through a referendum by the citizens of Alpharetta. It wasn't something that the mayor and the city council just decided they wanted to do. Uh, we wanted to ask our citizens whether or not this was an important issue for them, whether or not they wanted to approve or deny spending. We had about a million dollars. It ended up costing us maybe $1.7 million to build this entire park, uh, which was, I think, money well spent. It meant the world to me that it was finished before I had left office. Terry Porter at the Engineering Public Works Department shared her inside view of the park with us in relation to the Big Creek watershed. We knew in the beginning that we wanted to include as many eco-friendly options, especially with stormwater. We asked the EPD 
if they would consider helping to fund some of these projects in the park. So we applied for 319 funds, which are tied to stormwater treatment specifically. And the money is actually funded out of EPA, but administered through the local EPD here in Georgia. So we were absolutely thrilled when they gave us money. I know environmental education is a key element of the park. What are the highlights? Well, we included educational signage. We have an outdoor classroom, which is an amphitheater style feature that's built into the hillside that makes a great gathering area. The two pavilions in the park allow for us to entertain classrooms as well as groups. Um, my favorite being the Green Roof Pavilion. And the larger pavilion is the Seven Sided Pavilion, which is tied to the Cherokee history of the site. What do the trial gardens mean for the park? The trial gardens are absolutely essential. This park is situated basically in the center of Alpharetta and adjacent to the Big Creek Greenway, which is a 6.2 mile um, linear corridor that adjoins, you know, or meanders, you know, with the Big Creek through Alpharetta. So the site is fairly representative of, of what you might find as far as urban stormwater pollution. The trial models were designed specifically, it was a wonderful, ingenious design, to be able to actually um, take a container with a port and to be able to monitor what comes out through the trial gardens. We can actually use them as representative green roofs um, as compared to the green roof that's on top. And we would be interested in seeing pollutants that would come off of a standard architectural roof versus pollutants that would come off of a typical green roof. And we've got the ability with the setup to be able to do some of that monitoring. How did the severe drought conditions and complete water ban affect the planting of the green roof? We were unable to irrigate, so um, anything that we did water, we watered by hand from the ponds. Specifically, we used a little Honda pump, and we pumped water up onto the roof and the trial gardens as, as needed. Um, it was interesting, <laughs> and it worked. It did it work. It worked. We used gator bags around the trees, and, and we did everything we could to, to possibly um, be able to save them. The park has already received three awards. Can you tell us about the first one? The Georgia Association of Water Professionals and the Georgia Section of American Water Resources Association every year um, accepts applications for projects um, that have outstanding value. And ours won the Water Resources Project of Excellence. And that was mainly because of the stormwater features that were included, the habitat value, and the ability for the public to actually access and use the park. So the citizens of Alpharetta voted for the park and people like Debbie and Terry made it happen. But who actually designed the master plan? Green Love Land Planning was awarded this project from the city of Alpharetta in the summer of 2004. I think uh, the city initially they had seen this park as one and node to get people, users in the community, to the Big Creek Greenway. But in doing so, they wanted users to engage themselves in the natural environment, through interpretive signage, through learning about ecological issues, and, and learning about the Big Creek watershed itself. Uh, by the beginning of 2005, we began our uh, conceptual design process, meeting with the owner, developing a series of program elements. At the end of 2005, we had completed our construction documents and submitted it to the city for permitting. By the spring of 2006, the contractor was brought on board, and by the summer of 2007, the park was completed. So this is a relatively new park. It's uh, given time, it's gonna change some. Uh, all the best management practices and the stormwater mechanisms that we've designed will change over time, certainly, uh, as well as the green roof. But uh, it's gonna be exciting to see what happens with this park as it evolves.